Okay guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a nook similar to this here in the back. Um, this is an actual table that we downloaded off of the internet and um, we're creating one similar to that for the dollhouse in miniature. Now what we've done first is we've cut four of these sides out and then one for the back and one for the bottom and all of the measurements and everything will be on the template when I place it on the website. We glued them to there one across and one down and then now we're going to be moving on to the next part and one in the back is at a slight angle yeah if you look right there just barely an angle because this wood is on an angle okay and you're going to need need to do two of those because when we put it together with the rest of it it's going to go into an l shape Okay, so as we're working on the template, we want to let you know when you're doing the next part. This is the corner seat, which is here. If you notice, it'll fit right on top of there. Now, we made ours out of three, but you can actually make yours out of one if you want. We decided to do three so we know where to stop. Um, this is the corner seat support piece on the template. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to get glued to the back of here. And then when we put the two seats together, that's going to support the piece that's going across the seat bench. All right, so that's what you'll do with that. Okay, so I just want to tell you a little bit about this. They sell fine line applicator bottles, and um, this is actually contact rewetting drops. And I took the label off, and I just wrote wood glue on it. This pops off right here at the top, so you can just fill it up, and that's what we did to use that. All right, so now what we're doing is attaching the corner support to the back of the corner seat. You notice it comes out pretty thin, so it's a lot easier than using the stick. You don't have to be particular on this, getting it lined up. Even if it hangs over a little bit, that means it's going to push it away from the wall. If it hangs over on the side, if you're going to put it flat against the wall. So, we'll just let this dry. You might want to cut a couple little tabs that put here and just set this on to hold the, this corner seat. If you're going to put glue on there while it dries, to hold it into place. You don't glue the tabs to it though. They're just to hold it until it <clears throat> excuse me, until it dries. Okay, so to help with the support of holding this up until it dries, we went ahead and taped our little tiny pieces of wood on there. Now once the corner seat dries, we'll remove the tape and remove this piece of wood. And we're going to do both the both sides. <clears throat> All right, so that the glue does not stick to this, we took a piece of masking tape and we cut it in half, and we're just applying it on top of that little piece of wood. Again, we'll remove that when we get the seat on there. Okay, so you want to put glue on each side of the corner seat. Being the end grain like 
like this and it sucks that glue right in. The part that he's applying the glue to is right here and right here. Make sure you're working on a level surface when you're doing this, otherwise it's not going to turn out, it's going to be crooked. Okay, so once you have that on there, you're going to let that dry and make sure it's good and dry before you do anything else. And then we'll attach the back seat next, once it's dry. Okay, so we glued that piece there on the back side of that, and then next we're going to be gluing this piece on the back side of here. Okay, so now that we have this piece here, we're going to attach this piece here. We're applying some glue. And then you're gonna have a space in between here, so don't worry about that because there's shelf that goes on top. And, it and it'll be covered so you don't see it. All right, so then that's gonna attach like that, and don't worry about the gap, that's just because these are on an angle a little bit and it's going into the corner. Now we're just going to put a piece of masking tape across the back of it to help hold it so until it dries. Alright, so once you get that taped on there, just remove the excess glue. That way you're not having it splattered out on there. And when you go to sand it, if you're going to sand it, I would sand it before you put it together. And if you have any glue spots, sand it off with a very fine grit sandpaper. Wait a minute. All right, I cut the piece the same height as these with a 45 on these two edges and a slight angle on the bottom, a slight angle on the top, and it'll glue right into here. So, uh, and it'll glue right into here like that, and then I'll cut whatever it needs to be for a shelf on the top here. If you can see that. So here is the angle. Yeah, it's a 45. And you need it to be on a 45 so that it fits right into that corner. Yeah. And then the bottom... He it's just slight slightly thing. beveled, which you yeah. can sand it to get that. Yeah. There you go. Alright, just setting in there now, and we're getting ready to glue this piece in. That we cut the 45s on all three, the left and right, and on the uh, bottom so it doesn't have a gap underneath of it. And you can put a little bevel on top too, but it you know necessary because you're gonna put a shelf over it. But that's the way it's gonna set in there. Like that. And then we'll glue it. Now you're gonna apply the glue to the 45s that's meeting on there and across the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so once you have it there, you'll want to put a piece of tape to hold it in place until it dries. And we're using masking tape. Okay, for the top piece, we're taking a thin piece of 1 8 inch wood and we're cutting it at 45s to go completely on the top of the bench. Okay, we're kind of 
work and it's cut. It's gonna go right over top of this shelf. Like that. Okay, so you should come up with a triangle like this. However, we want to put trim around the top part of this. So we're going to cut the corners off and notch them out using the miter saw. Right, I'm marking this now so I know where to square the corners off at. So the, the molding can butt right up against it. I'll show you in just a second how this is going to work. Okay, so this is what we've gotten so far. And now we're going to put the shelf across the top and then we'll do the trim and then that'll finish this project up. Okay, this is how we did the corner of that piece. So their corners are cut right off and they're at a 45 going toward this. So that when we put it on here, it will be square for the molding. And this angle here is gonna determine with whatever molding that you purchase. I got this from the local craft store, so your craft store may be different. So I can't give you the exact measurements on that. Now, this that we got, the trim, is 1 8 by 3 16. So if you want to get that, then that'll actually work out perfect for across the top. And you won't have to worry about trimming it down or anything. All right, so you want to make sure that you have this even with that and that even with that over there, and it's even across with a little bit of overhang in the front. Okay, so it should look like that on the back when you have it glued. Okay, so we've cut the trim and now we're gonna be gluing it on top. And then these pieces will go here. Apply the glue, try not to put too much to where it comes out because otherwise it'll leak down on your project. <coughs> okay, so that's what the top trim looks like. This is optional and on the template we'll write the size of this measurement that we used for this. That's what we've got done so far. Remember this is going to be open. Now, I mean, you could cut a 45 and fit one in there if you really wanted to, but it's supposed to be against the wall, so. I have one of these in real life at my house and it's open as well, so I think that's okay. Okay, now we're going to add the piece underneath of the bench. And we'll be right back. Where'd this one go? All right. So we cut the bottom trim for around the seat base right in here. And then this one we cut to fit the back of under there. All right. So this is a 45 and that's a 45. And what's going to happen is we're going to glue this underneath of here. And you're going to have a little bit of space before the seat with that there so that the seat can overhang a little bit. 
All right, well, we're going to go ahead and glue this on here, and we're going to finish up this project and move on to the next one. All right, so here's the finished product. At the bottom, we have the trim all the way around, and then at the top, the same way. And then the sides, we actually um, didn't have a paint stick wide enough for this so what we did is we glued two together and once it's painted you'll never see it. And that was then, before we purchased this. Yeah. Okay go ahead and find this on my website under Dollhouse Miniature Madness and Tutorials.com. It's on my YouTube channel and I will also post it on my Facebook page. Alright talk to you later. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Uh, this picture was from a furniture store on the internet, and I thought it looked kind of neat, so I sort of mimicked their design. These uh, decorations in the back, it's optional, which you can put on here and around it if you care to do so. You could probably use balsa wood and trim it around like that. Balsa wood comes in different thicknesses. You can get it as thin as a sheet of paper, so it's really easy to carve out. So go ahead and um, check that out. If you want to add that to your details, you can. That's totally up to you. If you do decide to do that, though, you will need to recess this back as thick as your balsa wood and move everything back a little bit, which you do have enough room in the back to do that. But um, we decided not to go ahead and do that. We decided to keep it flat.